My name is Jarrell Gibbs. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, born and raised. Um, yeah, been here all my life. Do a lot of traveling, but Baltimore is what I call home. I started painting um, in 2014. Um, on Father's Day, 2014, my wife um, bought me an easel and some painting supplies as a Father's Day gift, and um, I've been doing it ever since. I paint my family first and foremost. Um, I also paint images of people that I feel like are telling a story just by their expression, their gesture. Um, I paint people that I feel like I have a common um, emotion or experience with. I paint those that I feel like has a narrative that I could run with. And typically, um, they have the, the diaspora. So they are people of color, they're African Americans, black, whatever you consider yourself, you're like who I'm painting. So. I consider my work to be made for humans. Like, what I'm painting is, uh, they're about human experiences, really no matter where you come from. On the most basic levels, we're humans, first and foremost. And that in turn goes to, again, my community and the people that I have communications with and conversations with day in and day out. Um, more of a universal, universal aspect. My name is Rylees Vasquez. Um, I'm from Dominican Republic, Mao Valverde. It's like 20, 30 minutes away from Santiago. I moved to New Jersey at a young age, so. But I was born in the Dominican Republic, and my earliest memories are from there. And I also visit every summer, so. I have a lot of family there, family and friends. Well, I've been painting since I was about 13 or 14 years old. I mean, I've been creating since, like a year after I got into a year after I came to the United States, I was like eight years old. Um, that's when I started drawing, but it was just more like the creative thing that I did because of my experiences. Um, but I started taking art serious in high school and really started thinking about it as something that I wanted to do long term. I paint my people. The people that I paint, I consider them to be my people. And, you know, I consider myself to be someone that belongs to different worlds. Um, so, Dominican people, people of the African diaspora, um, immigrants, uh, yeah, I would consider those to be my people. I, a lot of my work focuses on or has focused on my family, but I'm trying to, you know, really push it and make the work evolve. I think working with uh, Ray Lee's for these past, this past what, week and a half, almost two weeks, it will just change the way I see my experiences. It'll change the way that I view our world in its entirety, um, not just from a North American perspective, but in its entirety, you know, like we come from two different places, but we pretty much have the same stories. Um, so yeah, just taking a lot from that and just Really understanding one first and foremost, I think the one of the most major things that I realized was 
we come from different places, but we have the same views and the same ideas, which is which was kind of like mind blowing, especially when it comes to art. You know, I, I don't really, I'm not really able to have certain conversations with a lot of artists that like goes outside of just art and in general, like the practice of art. But I mean, we were talking about like real life things and some of it didn't have anything to do with art. It was just like real life shit, so yeah. I've learned so much from Jarrell. I think that us being here in the same space really allowed, like we, we were able to, to get along immediately and connect on so many different, uh, I mean, for the lack of a better word, levels. Like we were able to talk about our experiences in terms of family, our experiences in terms of the making of art, our experience with the struggles that we have in our communities, um, our experience with business, our experience with school. So we were we were talking a lot about all these different topics and it it wasn't anymore like we were two artists who were working together, which we were. It was more like we were just two people who were creating art together. So I learned an immense amount about Baltimore from Jarrell, um, the place where he grew up, the the beauty that's present here, the issues that are here as well, all the, well, a lot of his experiences and they're very eye-opening and a lot of them were experiences that I could relate to as well. Some things and I guess opinions that I had about residencies prior to coming to this one um, were pretty much, I, I thought it was basically like an artist going to a secluded area and taking time to just be creative and do what they wanted to do um, in a creative space. But this residency has been that in addition to many other things, meeting a network of people. Um, everybody that came through the door here at this residency particularly has been, um, in my opinion, I consider them like family now. Um, and I don't think I really could have gotten that experience from too many other residencies. Um, it's just a different vibe. It's not like, it's more than what I expected. Um, I, I was just planning to come to work, but I've learned so much about my own city that I didn't even know based off the residency that I'm, I'm kind of like embarrassed to even admit, to be honest, but it's been a um, learning experience and it's been a pleasure. And it just goes to show like how, how much beauty that we have within the spaces that we occupy if we just really open our eyes up to it. I think that the most important thing that this residency did for me was give me the opportunity to, um, or it gives, it gave us the opportunity to unite as people of uh, of the African diaspora that wouldn't necessarily get the opportunity to unite otherwise. So there's a lot of rhetoric and ambition towards. Um, the African diaspora and really uniting blackness, but I don't really see any of that really happening in any significant way. So I think this is a beautiful way to make something like that happen. And I know that this is an experience that I'm going to take with me. And, you know, it really, help, it really helps me um, negotiate a lot of the things that I'm thinking about in my practice. So it, it helps which is a good thing. It helps complicate the narrative even more, which is what I think we need um, in terms of our identities. It would be great if things were black and white, if something was wrong or right, or if, you know, if we were in a group or out of a group, but being able to see 
um, our experiences as a universal experience or as an experience that someone from a neighboring country uh, experiences as well. I think that's something that we don't get the opportunity to do. And of course, seeing the narrative in that way um, complicates the whole situation for us. But I think, that's a, I think that's a helpful thing. I think it's better to have that complexity there. Um, there's, this, there's this quote that by Gustavo Perez Firmat, um, which says, the fact that I'm writing to you in English already falsifies what I wanted to tell you. My subject, how to explain to you that I don't belong to English, though I belong nowhere else. And I think that quote perfectly explains the complexity of the situation that we're in both as people of the African diaspora, like my experience as an immigrant in the United States. My name is Tiffany Atriana Ward, and I am a curator as well as an MFA candidate for 2019. It's the curatorial practice program at MICA, Maryland Institute College of Art. So right now we are at Sunspot Studios, and tonight we are celebrating the collaboration between Mari Residency and Sunspot Studios. In Mari Residency, I'm the creative director of Mari Residency. So, okay, so Mari is, an, Mari is an acronym, and the M is for magazine, the A is for art curatorial projects, the R is for residency, and the E is for education. And we are a platform, and our focus is on decentralizing North American perspectives on blackness and on art. And we are made up of three women. There's me, and there's Nora Arieta Fernandez, and she is from Colombia, and Tatiana Scalato, and she is from Brazil, and we are trilingual. So the platform, will, the magazine portion will be in English, Spanish, and Portuguese for now, and eventually French and Dutch. Um, and Mare is really, we came together because we're all writers, and we are all coming from these perspectives where for me, you know, I'm an African American and I've lived abroad and learned so much about, you know, for me, I've learned about African American culture by living in another place and seeing like things that I did explain or the things I didn't have to explain. That taught me about African culture and West African culture and the ways that we held on to um, our experiences and we survived. So we've just been really inspired by the resilience and I think. Also another way, I love working with artists. I absolutely love artists. I love working through art. So one way to connect the diaspora for me that makes a lot of sense is through artists as individuals. And we have several, I have several different models. I spent about two years doing research on residency models and getting feedback from artists. Artists of all different colors and shades, but also seeing you know, what were the needs of black artists in residency spaces and like where did they feel that their needs had or hadn't been met and what were what are ways that I could cater to that. So that was really important for me to form a residency that's you know it's art of artist responsive in the way that it's designed. It's about the artist um, and it's about connecting as us as people in ways because we were purposely distanced and purposely broken apart. So it's about working to you know correct that and to love each other through that and and to do it through art so the artists are wonderful and this for the pilot edition I was fortunate not to only um, you know find artists that were talented and intelligent and thorough and you know interested in connecting history and literature and culture and black history, literature, and culture to their work and their practice. Um, so I was, I was fortunate to be able to find these artists and also artists, the two of them got along so well. And I think part of, I had always had these conversations about, you know, as I've traveled throughout the diaspora, especially within the Americas, how I've seen artists that are having, you know, similar conversations in their work. Not necessarily like in the way that it appears, but in the themes and in the questions that they're asking. And I think that Raylise and Jarrell are examples of this because they're coming from two very different, very different but also very similar places. And I think the pairing of, you know, an artist from 
Dominican Republic and a parent of an artist from Baltimore, which are two places that I, with people that I adore, you know, and you know, there's, there definitely needs to be more of an appreciation for historically black places like Baltimore, like the town of Mao Valverde, where Reyes is from. And I think it was just, it's been so impactful for me to see this model actually come to fruition and their work and like, and that's just speaking on them as people, but as, as artists, I, I find that I haven't even, I maybe haven't even actually talked about like their technique because it's just so, so innately beautiful to me. Um, and just the way that they both put so much of themselves in the work and of all of us in the work and the way that I can see myself in both of their, in both of their practices. And see myself, and see myself as a woman, as a black woman, um, and I think there's just there's a sense of family and memory in their work that I really appreciate. What I hope this does is that it strengthens artists, in that you know the model I've chosen has also been su very supportive of artists. So it's funny, I met Tiffany Ward um, when I first came uh, to Plant Roots in Baltimore about three years ago. And at the time, she was actually a real estate um, mortgage broker. So I was connecting with her about possibly doing some investments. But then as we got to talk, I found out that she had spent some time in Brazil and she was flu fluent in Portuguese, Portuguese. And that was really important to me because we were actually looking at a spot in Bahia because we think the whole black aesthetic isn't just Africa, it's not just America, it's like the whole globe, there's like this amazing black presence. And I know that's one of her um, focuses actually is to expand what people think the African diaspora is. So as we got to talking, um, we just really connected. She's from San Francisco. Uh, she lived in Brooklyn before, so she understood how communities get priced out of being in certain spaces. So she also understood the opportunity in Baltimore. So when she started her curatorial studies um, in a master's program at MICA, we were like, yo, we really want to support that. So we threw a party for her here. And um, we just decided that we should partner and do a residency. And um, it's really, like Tiffany is a very interesting, specific, brilliant, batty woman. I mean, she's just, she's amazing in terms of how, you know, for our first structured residency, how she put together these two brothers, Jarrell Gibbs and Reedy Vasquez. It's not just that these brothers are brilliant, because clearly they are, but, um, and my brother Mark Anthony, who's our resident um, artist, he can speak on that a bit more, because he, he got at them on the basketball court. But um, the way these brothers just got on with each other, like, these brothers were working in a 300 foot space back to back. And it's really deep because artists sometimes don't want to work around each other because they think that, oh, you're going to steal my thing. I'm gonna... But these brothers actually pushed each other. And when you walk in the house and you see them kicking it, having breakfast, cooking for each other, playing basketball, um, the spirit was correct. And so, you know, sometimes when people think about putting together a residency, they think about, oh, well, how popular is the artist or how talented is the artist? And of course, that's ultimately important. but. What's also important is a spirit, right? And for me, because this is also a place that we want to feel like a home, we want that we want when people walk through the door, they feel, ah, I can relax. I can just like this is some place I want to be. And um, she has, I mean, I think she's spectacular at putting together a team of folk. Um, and I hope to be working with her for a long time. So, um, just a couple of announcements. Um, we got food catered and sponsored by Sahoma Restaurant, which is a Dominican restaurant in Fells Point that you guys should all go to. Those menus, if you guys want to go. Um, and I just want to say thank you, everyone, for coming. And just a little bit about what well, am I in Mari residency, which is about connecting artists of the African diaspora. And it's very important for me to, you know, break some of the the borders and barriers that we have about what blackness is and who is or isn't, um, and going outside of what we've used to, used to define it as, especially 
within the art world and like the art scene. So I'm lucky, I have Raylise Vasquez and Jarrell Gibbs and their work is throughout the house. And this is also, it's a collaboration between Mari Residency and Sunspot Studios. And Sakala is the director of Sunspot Studios. Woo! Good to have everybody in the house. And they have locations here and in Brooklyn and Johannesburg. And they're about celebrating black people and black culture and elevating black people. Absolutely. Um, and I just, you know, I'm just really grateful for the artists and for Sakala and for Mark who's been in the house with us, and he's also a filmographer and photographer. Yes. Um, as well as Reggie, who's doing like some documenting of this. <laughs> Hi. Um, and you know, I'm here all night, if you guys have any questions, and thank you so much for coming. And make yourselves at home, right? Oh, and there's food. And there's food, food's in the kitchen, go get some food. Hunt it with it. Keep it hunt it. Keep it real funky. Keep it real. I'm gonna let you know the real Tiffany. <laughs> this shit has been crazy. Okay? I mean, she been keeping us up to like 2 a.m. working in the studio. Then she got us doing on like all types of shit that she want us to do. You feel me? Five minutes of work in a day, and then she expect us to create these masterpieces, do interviews, do all this shit. Like, what is up? The M is for magazine. The A is for art curatorial, and the R is for residency. <laughs> that was Takala, and he is the director of Sunspot Studios. Um, and this is Mark. Say hi, Mark. <laughs> and Mark is a bomb ass photographer, filmmaker. And he's going back in the house. Like, what cooked. really is up? Tell them I cooked. And she this cooked all at 1.30 it. in the morning. She demanded all this for <laughs> in two weeks. <laughs> she made banana bread at 1.30 in the morning. Last for night. For us to eat for two weeks. <laughs> My pan banana bread. She did make some banging potatoes, though. Some banging potatoes and eggs, I must say.